All right, in this demonstration, I want to show you how you can get started um, installing Champ on Windows. This is a Windows 7 installation. It should be very similar, though, for Windows 8. Um, OK, so first of all, I went to Google, and I just did a search for XAMPP. All right, and uh, that is actually pronounced Champ. Um, some people say XAMP, some people say ZAMP, whatever. Champ is apparently how you are supposed to pr pronounce it. Okay, so anyway, if you do a search, right, for this, the first hit is gonna be uh, the Champ installers and downloads for Apache and Friends, so go ahead and click on that. And it takes you to this page, and if you wanna watch a little bit, there's like a little tutorial, or well, it's not a tutorial, it's just a little um, introduction that tells you a little bit about what it is, but basically this is gonna be um, something that is a, uh, a developer's package that is an easy installer for the Apache web service for the MariaDB, um, which is basically an SQL service, a SQL service for databases. PHP, which is gonna be a module that works with Apache for dynamic scripting, server-side scripting, and Perl. And we're not really probably gonna get into Perl in this class, but you'll have it available. Okay, um, it's open source and as it says here, it's easy to use. What you need to do is just scroll down a little bit and you're gonna find uh, Champ for Windows. And if you're on a Mac, you would do the OS X. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and it's gonna, install, uh, it's gonna start installing the download right now. Okay, so uh, while that's downloading, there's something that I wanna go ahead and tell you right off the bat that you need to do. Uh, as that downloads, you can go over here to your start menu um, and in your search programs and files, what you want to look for is uh, just type UAC and it should come up with change user, user account control settings. Go ahead and click on that and most of, most of you are probably going to have your settings uh, at this sort of medium high setting. This is something that you're going to want to change before you install uh, jam. All right, so go ahead and lower it down to the lowest notification, and um, it's going to tell you it's not recommended. Um, th this is something that you really need to do if you're going to install this application, because um, well, I guess some people don't have problems depending on the way that their administrative account is set up, but a lot of people will have problems. So I'm just letting you know that you might need to do this. If you don't do it before you install, you might end up with a lot of error messages when you try to start the web service or the MySQL service. Um, anyway, so what you're gonna do is go ahead and say, okay. All right, and then you would say yes. All right, and then it's gonna tell you that you have to restart your computer. So as soon as this finishes downloading, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, restart my computer. Okay, so it's finished downloading, uh, but I'm not gonna launch it just yet because it is, um, I need to restart the computer. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you really quickly. Um, on this page, you'll see there's uh, Windows FAQs and OS X FAQs and Linux FAQs. Um, if you are using Linux, you might want to read this. Um, if you're using Windows, I'm going to just open this really quickly. Um, and I'm showing you this so that if you have problems with your installation, uh, this is a place where you might be able to find some troubleshooting tips. Um, you can also, of course, search the web. Uh, but you know, right off the bat, you can look through some of these things, okay? Um, and the same is true with the OS X. And before I start, I'm just gonna show you really quickly, uh, mine was set to go to my downloads folder, so if I look in my downloads, you'll see that I've got, um, I've got Jamp, and uh, it is version 5.6.20. If you are um, downloading this at a later date, it might be a different version, so please contact me. Let me know if anything in a later version is different from what I'm showing you, and I usually will try to update the video. So let's go ahead and uh, restart the computer now. So we'll go over here and we'll do a restart. Okay, so my computer is restarted, and I went into my downloads folder, and I'm going to launch the Jamp installer, and I'm going to hit Run. All right, so I'll click on next. 
and it gives you a bunch of component options. I'm not going to install all of these. I am going to disable Perl because I'm not interested in that. And I'm going to disable Tomcat. Tomcat, by the way, is for running JSP or Java server pages. We're not going to use the Tomcat server. You can if you want, if you think that you're going to use JSP. Um, but I'm going to leave everything else there and I'll go ahead and click on next. And you see that it's going to automatically want to put it in the C drive in the top level in a folder called XAMPP or JAMP. All right, just leave the default settings. Click on next. Okay, and uh, it's going to uh, also say learn more about Bitnami for JAMP. And uh, we're going to deselect that. Um, just leave that alone. Bitnami, if you want to if you want to leave that, you can, but I'm going to disable it. Bitnami is going to be something that allows you to do single-click installations. In this class, I'm going to show you how to do something other than single-click installations because whenever the single-click installations have problems, then you'll know how to do things sort of from from scratch, right? You'll know, you'll really understand how these things work. So I'm going to click on Next and again Next, and it's going to start installing. Okay, and then uh, once it's finished, you're going to say, do you want to start the control panel now? You go ahead and click that and leave it checked. Say finish, and uh, we're going to leave it, I'm going to leave it uh, for the US, for English, and it will get started. Okay, and so here we go. It launches this control panel, and I'll close this window out. It launches the control panel, and I want to show you a few things. Uh, first of all, if you look in the start menu, um, you're going to see in all programs that you've got this JAMP folder and it has, I'm not, we're not going to look at Bitnami right now, but you do have the Bitnami information. There's an uninstall in case you have problems and you have to completely start from scratch and uninstall. And then there's um, this control panel, which is what we're launching right now. And so if you want to make this so that it's really easy to access, um, you can, you know, make sure it's going to if, if you don't have it set so that it comes up here, you can pin it down to your start menu, or if you're using a different version of Windows, you can have it on your uh, front screen, however you want to do it. Okay, um, but the other thing too it's going to show you is there's this shortcut here to the JAMP htdocs folder. I'm going to describe to you later what this is, but just so you know, there is a shortcut right here to the htdocs folder. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute. So um, now it's run. It's uh, Jamp is installed, and what you need to be able to do at this point is go ahead and start your Apache service. Make sure it's it'll run. Make sure that your MySQL service will run, and you don't have to run FileZilla. If you want the FTP service to run, you can. Now here's the thing: um, if at any point during this installation a firewall uh, notice pops up and says, in order to run this, you're going to have to allow for your firewall to open these ports. You definitely need to allow for it. And if you want to be able to work in public places, uh, like in coffee shops and, you know, insecure, non-safe networks, then you should also allow for that as well when that checkbox comes up. It didn't pop up for me because I've already installed this once on this computer, and so the exception's already in the firewall. Just make sure that whenever it asks on the firewall that you let it go through. Otherwise, you'll have a problem with this running. And you'll notice a few things. One is when the Apache web service is running, uh, you'll see that it shows process ID numbers. That's what PIDs are. Uh, the ports that Apache is using is port 80 and port 443. Port 80 is the regular HTTP or Hypertext Protocol uh, service. And 443 is going to be the HTTPS or the secure shell version, uh, encrypted version of the HTTP process. Okay, um, so any any time that you would have encrypted traffic, it would run through the 443 port. MySQL uses a standard port of 3306. That is the normal standard MySQL port. And you see here it says MySQL, but you might have noticed earlier that it said that it was installing a, a database called MariaDB. Well, MariaDB is a version of MySQL. It's basically MySQL. MySQL was purchased by Sun Microsystems. It used to be an open source free database. Uh, and they still have a free version of it, but um, 
people don't always love what Sun does to things, and so they splintered off and made other ones. Um, and MariaDB is purely open source. It's not owned by Sun, uh, but it basically does all the same things. And apparently it's also a little bit more um, efficient. Okay, so uh, you can stop the services at any time here. You can also uh, look at config files. So the Apache config file is going to be this HTTPD. The D stands for daemon, daemon, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and uh, it's httpd.config. Um, I'm not going to open this right now, uh, but if you ever needed to change your httpd config, this is where you would go. Um, and same is true for some of these other things. The php.ini file, uh, and you may end up at some point needing to change that. I'm not going to get into it right now. But if you needed to, for instance, allow for larger file uploads or something like that, uh, because it's being, you know, php.ini file is preventing it, this is a server file that, um, that basically is going to allow certain sizes of file uploads. You should also realize that Right now, what this is doing is this is the local environment that's on your computer. This is not on the, a server that's up in the sky. This is not like, say, a server that is on GoDaddy or on Media Temple or on the school server or something like that. This is on your own computer that you just installed this. So one thing you do need to understand is, like I just said, the php.ini file, for instance, um, if you were to make modifications to it or to the httpd conf uh, config file, that would just be um, something that you would make changes on your own computer. If you needed to modify the uh, file size of your uploads, you might very well need to get permission from a server administrator to modify that file because uh, you might not have access to it. They might have to um, you know, change something from you know a minimum or excuse me a maximum of like two megabyte file uploads to like 25 megabyte file uploads if that's something that you want you you might have to ask somebody for that okay something else i want to show you really quickly is um, for apache where if you look over here next to the stop action um, there is an admin button so let's click on that for apache what you're going to see is that it opens up a web page in your default browser and it takes you to this address, which is localhost forward slash dashboard. This is the index page of that dashboard. So if, for instance, I were to type index, it gives me the same page, All right? So it's just loading that index.html page. If I click on FAQs, this is something that if you were to remember I showed you on the regular website. It's the same set of information. And then if you uh, go to how-to guides, this is going to be really helpful for you if you want to do other things that maybe I don't go over, or if you want to try to troubleshoot some Apache startup problems on your own, things like that, or use a different PHP version, whatever. These are going to be, a lot of these are going to be more advanced things, um, like configuring virtual hosts and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to talk about what that is right now, but just so you understand that right now, localhost is the main host name for your computer now. If it's, uh, if you know, as long as your web service is running, localhost is going to be your host name on your computer. Uh, it is not, however, going to be like if you have a domain like myname.com, that's going to be the host name on the actual server uh, that's up in the cloud. This is your local environment though, and so on your own computer, Apache is going to use localhost as the host name. All right, if I click on PHP info, it opens a new window. This is about the build of PHP that was installed, and I wanna show you uh, something really quick. It has like a lot of really valuable information that's gonna potentially be very helpful to you later as you're doing scripting. But if you do a control F on Windows um, while you're on this page and you type in uh, display underscore and jumps to display errors, all right, you wanna make sure that that's turned on. It should be turned on by default. That is something that you would always want to make sure is enabled on a development server. If you don't have this turned on, if you have errors, it's just going to show a blank page. It's not going to tell you what's wrong with your errors and you won't be able to troubleshoot. So I'm going to close that. And uh, also there's this PHP My Admin link and it takes you to the interface to the database. We're not going to deal with this yet because we don't need to. Uh, I'll 
talk about that more later when we get to database stuff, but right now I'm just going to go back. All right, so just remember this was in the dashboard, okay? And if I close this now and I look at MySQL and I click on its admin, it's going to just go straight to that PHP My Admin page. And this is something that almost every single web server host that you're going to buy web services from is going to have this as a free option.